In one of the comments recently, there was a question about randomly extracting values from an array. As I looked through my tutorials, I discovered I haven't done a tutorial on random numbers. But to make it more than that, I want to do, do a tutorial on a generator function randomly retrieving values from an array until they are all gone. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe and remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now. The description also has a link to earn script. Remember, you can use script to get free courses. So here's what I want to solve. I want to create a generator function that will allow me to pass in an array. And then I can retrieve values from that array randomly in a one at a time fashion. That's the main reason I'm using a generator function. This would allow me to pass in any array and then when needed, perhaps when a user interacts with a button or something, I can extract a random value from the array and continue to do so until all the values are gone. Now, if you are not familiar with a generator function, its sole purpose is to return a generator object. That object is an iterator. We can access that object with the next method, and each time we do that, it returns a value. This is the one at a time feature I was talking about. I think this problem shows a good example for a generator, so let's look at it. I appreciate any comments as well. If you have additions to this, please share them so others can learn from it. All right, so, so far I have an array set up here and I just have some numbers in it. This is what I wanna use as an example. It could be any type of array, obviously. So let's begin creating our generator function. Now there are two parts or two things that make a function a generator function. One is an asterisk right here, immediately after the function keyword. Then we have the name of our function. And I'm going to pass in an array, so I want to be able to accept that. And then we define our function. Now, somewhere in the function, to make this a generator function, we will have a yield keyword. Now, the yield keyword will cause things to pause at that point. So when the generator is created, whenever we use the next method to access it, it will return whatever is at the yield statement and then it will pause. It won't continue in that code. All right, so the code we set up actually is used by the generator that this function will create. So let's go ahead and set up that code that's going to give us a random element from whatever array is passed in. So I'm gonna declare two variables first. LM is going to store the element, the random element we want to grab and then I'm just going to declare a variable for the length of the array. I'm going to be using the length in a few places, so I want to assign it to a variable. Now I'm going to set up a while loop. And basically the while loop is going to run as long as the length of the array is greater than zero. Now I'm gonna put a yield statement inside this while loop. So you may think that this will continue to go all at once until it is done. But because we're putting yield in there, it's going to pause. And then it won't continue until I interact with it with the next method again. If you're not quite sure how that's going to work out, you'll see it at the end. But let's go ahead and set this up. So I'm gonna create a random number first. Get a random number between zero and one less than the length of the array. Okay, between zero and one less than the length of the array. Then that means I can pull any element from this array. So the way we do that, I'm gonna do math.floor, and that's going to act on math.random. Gonna grab a random number, which gives us something between zero and one, but then I want to multiply that by the length. So that would give us a random number. Because of math.floor, it'll be a random number between zero and the length of the array minus one. Now we've got that random number, let's go ahead and grab the element. And I'm gonna do this with the splice method. I have a tutorial on this. If you're not familiar with it, I can link to that in the description. 
But Splice will allow me to delete something or delete an element from this array right here, and it will return it as an array. So I want to delete one element. I want to remove one element and have it returned. And the element that I want to remove is of an index rand, whatever that rand number is between 0 and length of the array minus 1. And then I only want to remove one item. Now, since this returns an array, I then want to grab it from the array because I don't want to return an array. I want to just return the element. And so I will get the zero element from that returned array. And that will give us the actual item. Then here's where the yield statement comes in. Yield LM. So whenever I use the next method, this is what I'm going, going to get. And the yield statement will cause it to stop here. So it won't continue with the while loop. It will pause. And the way it's described in some places is it exits the function and then returns back in the next time we do a next method. Now, one more thing I need to do here is I need to update the length. So once we've removed an element, I'm going to update the variable that contains the length like that. All right, so there's our generator function. Now we need to call it. And it's going to return, like I said, a generator object. So we need to grab that generator object and put it in a variable, rand scores. Random element, and I want to pass in the scores array because that's the one I want to act on. OK. So this will now have a generator object, which we can then interact with with the next method. I'll show you that in just a minute. So let's go ahead and save this. And then we're going to refresh. And let me open up the console here, make sure we have no errors. Looks good. And let me just show you what RAND scores contains. You can see that it is a generator object. You may not be familiar with everything in here, um, but it does indicate that it is a generator. But let's look at how we would use this. So I'm going to access RAND scores the first time I need to access it using the next method like that. And what does it return? It returns an object. And the object has a value of 40 and done equals false, meaning it's not finished. It can continue. We can use the next method again. But 40, notice, was one of the values that was in the array. If we look at the scores array now, that 40 is gone. So we can see it's working for us. Now, if I did rand next again, we get another value. Again, we get another value. And if I didn't want to retrieve the value in an object like this, I could just do rand scores.next.value. Whoops, dot value like that. And then it would give me just the value, the actual element. Now, it's going to continue to do this until everything is gone from the scores array. We have four left. So if I do. One, two, three, four. Now when I do it again, it comes back undefined because there's nothing left in there. Also notice that if at this point I do just next, the object is undefined or the value is undefined in the object, but it also indicates that done is true. So there's our solution. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you learned some things about generators. All right, please hit that like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And once again, thanks for watching.